Chuck, why the emergency call to my hotline? Because we left off a place that has really put me in uh, my peak curiosity. <laughs> okay. Which is we were talking about how the death of stars seeds the universe with the ingredients of life. Which, by the way, was like just incredible. What a, what a great explainer where we, you know, talked about how fusion leads to a point where we get to iron, we can't go anymore, or as I like to call it, absorption. And <laughs> absorption. Then, <laughs> and, and then, boom, we have to explode, right? Yes, yes. And But then, you, this is what got me when you said that, and then that is what, when these elements go out into the universe and they seed stellar nurseries and, you know, and they start this process again, and I'm just like, how does that even happen? Like, mm -hmm. how does the process itself then get kickstarted, you know? Um, okay, so, uh, so a couple of things. Let me come into that from a back door. Okay. So if you take biology class, and one of, every biology class will spend some amount of time trying to define life. Yes. Okay? And it's hard because we only have one example of it. Right. So it's, it's hard to generalize what life requires if you only have one example of life. The day we find another example of life, we can throw away the things that we thought were fundamental to life that happen to apply to us and just get the basic bottom deno common denominator of the two life forms that we know about. And if we discover a third life form and a tenth life form, we can more sharply tune. So for example, does life need liquid water? Well, we know life on Earth needs liquid water, but there's all life. Maybe there's liquid ammonia uh, in another place, okay, that matters. I saw a comic where there's a crashed alien flying saucer in the desert, right? And the aliens are crawling out, and they're saying, ammonia, ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little bit of a cosmic perspective there. All right. So life, you don't, I don't think we know, but often, What's bandied about is the idea that life has a metabolism, okay? It, it, it uses energy. It needs a source of energy so that it can use the energy. And then when it uses the energy, it has to continue to replenish the source. And life needs a way to reproduce itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't sustain. I guess something can be alive but not ever reproduce itself. But uh, in, in the full understanding of what life means and does on Earth, it has a metabolism and can reproduce itself, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you look carefully at stars, they have a metabolism. They're born, they live out their lives, they die, and they reproduce themselves. So by some definitions, even many definitions of life, stars are alive. Hmm. Just putting it out there. So in the respect of life itself, there is, there is a facet where stars themselves fit the definition fit, of, fit, fit the some definition of those of very being important, alive. important de definitions. That's correct. And the reproducing themselves is their gas clouds waiting for this enrichment that then birth a next generation of stars. So it's, it's just an interesting way to think about stars relative to how we've thought about biology. So now, we can ask how you make a star in the first place. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, first you got to get a good agent. Let me just tell you <laughs> because you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not connected <laughs> correctly, you're gonna have some issues. Okay. So some gas clouds have better agents than others. Okay. All right. So um, there are two broad categories of galaxy out there. One of them is elliptically shaped, mm -hmm. and we call them elliptical galaxies. Okay. And they're sort of round, and they don't have much gas at all. They ate up their gas back when the galaxy was born, leaving hardly anything left to make new generations of stars. Okay? okay. We call those elliptical galaxies. And broadly, again, another is a very flat version of a galaxy that has spiral arms, and we call those spiral galaxies. All right? Mm, very okay. yeah. clear and present. All right. Those are very inefficient at making stars, and they're still making stars today. Okay. They're as old as the elliptical galaxies, but they're still making stars, and they still have huge repositories of gas. All right. Now, 
I have a gas cloud minding its own business. Okay. All right. Um, there are reasons why a gas cloud would just ha be happy to stay that way its entire life. But here's what happens. Uh, either a star blows up nearby, creating a shock wave that sh literally shocks the gas cloud. Okay. Or there are other sort of waves that relate to the maintenance of the spiral pattern, and they're called spiral density waves. And the point is, what we have is you have gas clouds moving through a region of the galaxy that, it, because of this, what's called a density wave, it's compressed uh -huh. as it moves through this region before it comes out the other side. Gotcha. All right? Okay. And so... It, What's an example of that? If you're in traffic and you're driving down the street, right, and then you sort of, if there's a slow moving car mm -hmm. with its flashers on, right, it slows everybody down. Yes. Okay. And you, right. you, and you work your way around it and come out the other side. Right. That's a density wave in the traffic. Awesome. If you see it from a helicopter, the entire traffic pattern is moving. Because the car with its flashers on is moving. It's just moving slower than everybody else. So the traffic is moving fast. It slows down and it merges out the other side. That is a density wave in the traffic. It's a perfect analogy to what's happening in the galaxy, except the galaxy doesn't have cars. All right. So here's what happens. If you shock the gas cloud or create a density wave that will force some compression, little bits of it will now be denser than other regions. Okay. If you're denser, you have stronger gravity near your surface okay. than other places do. Well, I want to get that next molecule that comes by, and you're going to attach to me. You're not going to be free-floating anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, all right, I just added a molecule to myself, and you didn't. With every extra molecule, I now have more gravity than I had before. Uh huh. Okay? And I start clearing out the gas cloud because even if you tried if i started before you i'm gonna win because this is a runaway process for all the new mass that i accumulate based on the power of my gravity from before i now have even more gravity, more gravity. correct so more gravity gets breeds more gravity and this is a runaway process and so when this happens you can trigger star formation in a gas cloud. Uh -huh. And typically, there's a whole region of the cloud that starts making stars. And when you do that, you make a star cluster. Uh -huh. All the stars with the same birthday. And uh, it's fascinating how we use star clusters to figure out how stars evolve. It, it's, it's more fascinating than it sounds like than I'm even explaining to you right now. It's just complete. It's the same thing as taking a snapshot of civilization, and all you have is a snapshot. Right. And you have to figure out, well, how are people born? And how do they die? You know, are you born, uh, are we born in the ground? Right. Shriveled, and we bring you out of the ground, and then we feed you, and then you flesh out, and then uh, over time, do you then shrink, and then exit back into another human being? The, the time order is not obvious because we don't have a video of this happening. We just have, because we don't live long enough, we just have snapshots of clusters at different stages of their evolution. And so that's another explainer. I'll get to that. It's, it's very cool. I, I just, I'll give you an example. Everybody in a day goes to the bathroom some one way or another, but you don't spend much time there. Well... Um, that, okay. that's debatable, <laughs> debatable, <laughs> just saying. Relative to other things you do, you don't spend much time there. Okay. So a snapshot is not likely to catch you in the bathroom. Are, do only some people live in the bathroom while others don't? What does everybody go through the bathroom? So these are questions we ask and we answer them brilliantly in the history of this exercise. But my point is, um, this triggering of the gas clouds is what, um, this shocking of the gas cloud is what creates pockets of condensation, right. pockets of convergence of matter that then, as they continue, okay, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, it'll keep doing this. The 
native temperature of the cloud will sustain it to some level, okay? But as it gets more and more and more massive, there's greater and greater gravitational pressure on the core. There is the point where we have ignition. Got you. Thermonuclear fusion, fusion. ignition. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, a star is born. And so that then stabilizes this against any further collapse. And it will continue to accrete material unless unless the star is of a very high luminosity variety. Because you know what happens? The photons that come out, they exert a pressure unto themselves. And if, you, if you're Johnny come lately to the party, you just get pushed away. And so this is a fascinating point in the evolution of a star because the high mass stars, we see them evacuating the pocket out of which they formed. Oh, there are wow, these yeah. Pockets where the gas is not as dense. Because first it had absorbed up the initial amount of gas in that pocket, and anyone who tries to make it later, it ends up getting pushed mm. away. So, sorry, guys. Club is full. Club is full. That's Club it. is full, guys. <laughs> I got to put the rope rigged. down. Got to put the rope down, guys. <laughs> Listen. Now I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Don't worry, man. I, I saw your latest work. I, I'm a big fan. But the club is full, but, man. <laughs> we got fire laws. We got fire laws, man. Sorry. No, put your money away, bro. Put your money away. I'm serious. Um, <laughs> and by the way, this is decades and decades of hard-earned telescope observation, brilliant yeah. people thinking about what's going on. There's the thermodynamics of it, the quantum physics of it the the uh, chemistry of it there's all of this going on and that's why in astrophysics we tap the expertise from people of many different professions and that's also why uh, uh, astrophysics is by many myself included is considered a gateway subject to teach in school ah so you can use that as a means of going to in as a portal to a go to portal. many different lands in yes, science. Yes, yes, in oh. science. The biology, the chemistry, the physics. The, the geology, and, whatever. The, the geology on the planets. And, of course, we send hardware out there. So if you're, if you're an engineering geek and love the universe, we got a place for you, too. So nice. Yeah, that was, this has been my recruitment <laughs> <laughs> PSA for modern astrophysics. So anyhow, that's that's how we that's that's kind of how it's done. That's yeah. pretty cool. I I I, I a, love a, it. A fast addition, Chuck. Do you know when I was in high school in my chemistry class? Uh huh. I, I had asked as we learned about the periodic table. I said, "Where do all these elements come from? Said, well, do we find them in the Earth?" That was the answer. It would be a couple of years later when I learned, no, we made these in our stars. Right. Okay? And that, the, they were birthed in stars first and then became part of the Earth as the Earth formed. Um, and, oh, by the way, uh, borrowing a bit from the earlier explainer where the buck stops at iron. Yes. All right. And, by the way, there's no shortage of iron in the world and in the universe. And Earth's core is primarily made of iron. Mm -hmm. All of that comes from uh, the fact that once the star made iron, there it is. It's a major part of that. A major part of that uh, process. And it makes the heavier elements. It can still make heavier elements. It's just not getting energy out of it, right? right? So there's a plenty of energy in a supernova explosion to keep making elements up the periodic table. But you're not sustaining the energy of a star by doing it. You're sucking energy from the explosion and all the energy that's already available to you. So, man. Anyhow, that's how it works, Chuck. Some of that's, how that works. That's fascinating. I love it. I love it. It's, uh, I mean, it makes perfect sense. And the thing that's weird is that you have to think about these in terms of atomic terms. Like, in, while you're thinking, I'm trying to think about this not in terms of like actual things fusing like Lego, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Legos are good. That's a good fusion. Because yeah. you get them close enough, then they just stick. They just stick, right? right. But they more, stick yeah. in there. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, but it's it's no, like, yeah, it's happening at a at a at a at a, an atom, not only atomic but a nuclear a level. Nuclear oh, level. by the way, the whole universe, which was all energy at one point, as the universe cooled that E equals MC squared, the energy becomes the matter out of which right. everything would later form. And most of that matter is hydrogen and helium. 
So, so you start out for free from the birth of the universe with the hydrogen and the helium and these big gas clouds. They're just there for free. For free. And that's all. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, this makes me just want to go, just be there when it happens. Like, why can't we just be there and let the world know that Chuck wants to be in the room where it happens? <laughs> <laughs> Chuck wants to be. I just want to be in the I room. I just want to be in the room where it happens. <laughs> <laughs> is that the name of that song? What's the actual name of that song? It's from uh, Hamilton. It is from Hamilton. I don't know the name of the in song. The room where it happens. Yes. Okay, we'll work on it, Chuck. Maybe All I'll, right. <laughs> I'll hook you up with the universe one day. Yes, exactly. Right. Another uh, Star Talk explainer. Good to have you, Chuck. Always a pleasure. For Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.